Margaret, you've come from Canada, from the Middle West, and you've lived for a long time in Africa, and your writing, your novels, reflect both backgrounds. Do you feel that one could not have been necessary without the other, or that this was just like a kind of reporting? I don't think that anything I've ever written has been reporting. Um, at least I hope not, because my medium is fiction, which I think is quite different from reporting. I think that I do have a very strong sort of feeling for places, and when I first went to Africa, uh, it fascinated me, and in, in fact, I loved it, and I felt, um, you know, tremendously moved to write about it. But after I came back to Canada, I continued to write about Africa for a while, and then I really felt as though I'd reached the end of the line, that particular sort of... Um, vein of uh, material was, was mined out. I couldn't go any deeper into the sort of African mind, as it were, because I'm not African. And I decided I really only wanted to write about my own kind of people. And it was then that you decided that you would turn back to the, to your background, your, yes, your right. personal background, mm -hmm. without it being any kind of that's autobiography. Right. Well, I made up my mind that I was stuck with the Scots Presbyterians of Manitoba, you know, for better or worse. God help them and me. What do you think that background gave to you and, and does for your fiction? Well, it's very hard to analyze. I do have a very sort of ambiguous feeling about my background. It's, uh, when I think of the Scots Presbyterians, you know, the prairie people, I always think of Moses' remark about the Israelites. You are a stiff-necked people. And this is true, you know, we are a very stiff-necked people. And there's lots of things in that background that I don't like at all. Um, I think that uh, there's a sort of su suppression, a kind of repression of emotion and so on that I don't care for. And uh, yet there's a kind of independence and strength which I, you know, admire. And I think probably this comes out particularly in the character of Hagar in, in my second novel, The Stone Angel. Well, I've just finished reading your latest novel, Jest of God, which has as its heroine a lonely school teacher in a small town in Manitoba. And it struck me then that it was, although it seemed to be about a love affair, it, it was really about loneliness and about isolation. Yes, I think so. I, I think myself it was also about uh, one human individual's attempt to uh, learn how to make contact with other people and not to be afraid of making herself vulnerable. Because this was, of course, her great difficulty, that she was so terrified of goofing, of appearing a fool, and so on, that she actually couldn't reach out uh, to, uh, to other people at all. And in fact, no human relationship is possible without people being willing to make themselves vulnerable to some extent. Is this a theme that you have worked and reworked through other things that you've written? I think, in a sense, it's... Uh, it, it is, because in a sense it, it concerns human freedom, really. And this is a theme which comes out a lot in my African writing, because it starts with a sort of external freedom. Um, what do you mean external well, freedom? Well, when I first started to... Uh, they say a writer's only got one theme. I don't know whether this is true or not. I sort of hope it isn't true, but I fear that it is. And I think when I first started to write about Africa, I was concerned about, you know, the independence of African countries and this kind of thing. A person. Uh, finding himself in, in a situation where uh, the country was going to be independent and how did he feel about it and so on. And from this kind of external freedom, I sort of feel that in a way I've kind of moved into being more concerned with um, sort of inner freedom. Do you mean that the emergence of, say, the, the independent African nations was to you kind of symbol, although I don't want to use that oh, yes, very word, for the individual's emergence oh, from certainly. a group? Oh, certainly. Uh, the individual's emergence uh, from... Um, from sort of fear and, and from living compulsively, you know. Because so many people, I mean all of us in fact, uh, are moved by our sort of compulsions and fears and so on. And uh, this concerns me very much. And are you always trying to work out what brings people beyond this particular stage? Well, I don't do this consciously, but I think that it, as it has worked out in several of my novels, this in fact is what is happening. I don't start out thinking, well, I'm going to, you know, write a novel with a certain theme because I started out always with an individual character. And this is really what interests me most in the novel, is the sort of creation of character. And does the plot go just where the character goes? Does the character grow in your mind? Absolutely, and the character sort of forms the plot, in this sense. I mean, it's always the person, the individual, that comes first. And then, of course, you know, certain things happen to this individual. Only this particular thing could happen 
uh, to this particular individual in this situation. Do you find this exciting? I find it enormously exciting because, in a sense, uh, writing a novel is a sort of discovery. You really, you know more or less where you're headed, but everything could change in the doing of it. And, uh, you know, you can, you can be very surprised.